Love is like a refreshing river. It gives, shares, and cares. Love is like a warrior protecting, guarding, and leading. Love is like the weather. You never know how it's going. Love is about holding on tight and never letting go. Love is about holding on tight and never let go. Love is about holding on tight and never let go. Love is about holding on tight and never let go. Love is about holding on tight and never let go. When you cry, I'm crying too. my mind and I put it to Becky and to Shanette and so on. It has far, far, far exceeded any expectations that I had. My highlight was really seeing how those boundaries were pushed by young people. Initially, when we were given the assignment to go look up scarecrows, it was a bit confusing because, I mean, for us, we live in South Africa, we are hardly exposed to any scarecrows. 
The closest thing that we have to a scarecrow is a two liter water bottle that we put on the grass to chase away the dogs. But however, we started having a lot of fun as we started doing more research into the history and the making of scarecrows. Well, I don't know if you said that, but I know, don't necessarily enjoy creating with my hands. Let me say that. Um, so making stuff um, is not like, I write and I kind of stick to that. Um, but I did enjoy the, the child likeness of just creating without the pressure of it being looking because it was a scarecrow so you know like it's supposed to be ugly <laughs> i think me and nicole met halfway because she's quite creative and so even teaming up with her was actually a highlight because you know she was the brilliant mastermind i just brought the materials <laughs> so, um but i did enjoy the the power of the arts to um connect the power of the arts for for, for mere enjoyment but also to provoke thought. To make this an even more fun experience, the participants decided to add some of their own art forms that they were well versed in. There was acting, music, poems, and even drawing. As much as it was fun looking into the scarecrows, we also had to look into some of our social issues that we face in our day-to-day -day lives. We looked at some of the negative aspects of our society. Participants from India showed us that there is more to a scarecrow than just it being a scary being. They taught us a very important lesson, which is to never judge a book by its cover. We cannot shy away from the fact that South Africa is a country that is well versed with different cultures and races. As represented by Rachel Scarecrow, one of the main agendas of the Scarecrow project was to tackle social issues. In this case, we indicated one of the main issues that's been affecting a lot of South Africans, which is gender-based violence. All these scarecrows stood to fight all our social issues and always be a reminder to fight all our problems head on. I think as I created this, um, our, our scarecrow, it, it, it was like, oh, this is really what I believe about how we can um, address gender-based violence. It really is about, or, or one part of it is about women understanding our worth, because if I understand my worth and my identity, I will not, um, and to a certain extent, tolerate being um, mistreated if, if I have any, um, um, what do you call it? control over it you know so it's like sometimes women stay in abusive relationships because they think they must stay there so if i understand my identity yeah. um and if i if, and if i teach my young daughters and my nieces and my everyone around me that this is who we are as women even my nephews um i think that will that will change so it really um yeah i i enjoyed the process of being a child and creating but also um having having my thoughts provoked so in conclusion we came to an agreement that we can not only just talk about this and leave it for our next project. That's why we bring to the world our textile women, Tanaka and Delhi. Tanaka and Delhi were made by some of our junior members of RSA using only recycled material, and this project was heavily inspired by Maggie Squire. Tanaka and Delhi are currently at the Durban City Hall foyer where they are on exhibition. Okay, so we were involved in a online a workshop at Maggie Squire, who is from the UK, and introduced the project where she uses own material in creating um, scarecrows or just any kind of human sized um, puppets, if that's the right way of putting it. And so we decided we were going to adopt the same idea um, and then just link it with our gender based violence um, program or theme that we were working on at the time. And then we then was introduced to the learners, we were more particularly the ROSA group, which is uh, at Besha. And then we did a workshop um, in terms of finding out what do they know about gender-based violence, what is their understanding, what they hope to change, uh, what they hope to introduce, address. And then from the, uh, from the findings of the research and the interviews and just discussions and feedback of the group, we then shortlisted what was important and then we started working on the figures. They will stand there and be a reminder to everyone that they stand their ground towards any form of human rights violation. 
My highlights of the project was how everyone was so open and honest and vulnerable with what they were sharing and that really touched my heart. And also how different creative responses led to one of the biggest art forms was storytelling. How everyone shared their stories through their creative responses and that encourages me to continue to share my story because not only did I try and impact others but I was impacted through their stories. And so that encourages me to go and share my story stories because I may be helping someone get over a circumstance that they are facing. So from me to you, continue to share your story because you may not only just be sharing a story, but you are helping someone get over a circumstance that they are facing. Thank you. been murdered in Johannesburg. The, young woman was found murdered in the woman was found buried. In today's video, we are going to be speaking about two topics, scarecrows and gender-based violence. Most of us, if not all of us, know the purpose of scarecrows. They are created to protect what's in the garden and in the fields, and to scare away things that do not belong there. And gender-based violence 
it's a well-known social issue that is infecting and affecting people globally. Hi everybody, my name is Mpume Zikhali. I am currently a youth worker. I do a lot of volunteering work. I work for an NPO called Epic Youth Matters and we deal with um, youth and community work. Gender-based violence is caused by various factors that contribute to people being belittled and being suppressed of their power and gender inequality and the lack of access into various things in life. It's caused by toxic behaviors and toxic psychological thoughts. Cultural in the sense that some people are taught to, to, to believe that men are greater than women and sometimes when the roles are reversed, some women are taught that for as long as you are independent and you've got everything going for you, you're allowed to look down on a man who doesn't have as much as you do. And psychological in a sense that some people are brought up in a home where there's a lot of abuse so that's all they know you'll find that in a certain home the only way they resolve issues is by beating or shouting and screaming at each other and therefore a child or a person from that household will grow up knowing that okay the only way we can resolve any issue in this house is by having a fist fight or screaming at each other and you know and stuff like that one in three South African women will be raped at least once during their lifetime. In the last year, 2,695 women were murdered in South Africa. No, they need to know we are fighting our rights. I wish I could go anywhere, like just the grocery store, without having to share my live location with one of my girls or a family member just to be sure that I come back safely. I would go to a park, sit in the middle of the park, read a book, take a nap, like how people do in the movies, you know. I would take a nap in the middle of the park, wake up whenever, go back whenever, and not fear my life, honestly. I wish I could not spend money on pepper spray and tasers and I don't just a lot of like protective things that women basically see now as a necessity to have. So I wish I would just not spend money at all on like pepper spray. Honestly, I would go for a jog on the beach at night without fearing my life I wish I can just take a self-defense class because I want to not because I have to because with gender-based violence it's an obligation basically for women to at least know some form of knowing how to protect themselves you know so I would go to a self-defense class only because I want to. President Cyril Ramaphosa has launched a private sector-led gender-based violence and a femicide response fund. So I released a statement last week saying three key bills relating to gender-based violence had been introduced in Parliament tonight. He's called them the most far-reaching legislative overhaul in the fight against gender-based violence. But the problem comes when it's time to implement those laws that have been planned. And that is also because some people have not been sensitized around GBV. So they become, they become secondary, uh, they become secondary abusers to the people that they're seeing to in different workplaces, law enforcement agencies, clinics, um, and so on. So for me, I really, I genuinely feel like, yes, South Africa does have some good things that are put into place but the only problem is the implementation part a lot of people still need to be sensitized around gbv um because some people still believe that gbv falls under being disciplined and not so much of a of an abuse 
so that's why they feel like it's correct or it's right for you to beat a woman or it's right for you to hit a man because they still feel like okay it's a disciplinary method instead of them being taught that it is a form of abuse how would i want my scarecrow to play its role in society it will not just protect women and children and scare away violence but there's so many roots that lead to the social issue of gender-based violence so each body part of the scarecrow will tackle each root for example the head symbolizing educating young people and not just education at school but education at home the legs may symbolize movement firstly moving backwards to discover our identities such as cultural identity now there's so many symbolic meanings that each scarecrow may have each body part may have but overall our scarecrows should not wait for the crops to die to then play their roles in society but should go to the roots of the weeds that are growing and killing these crops pluck them out and this will hopefully help prevent control stop and soon eradicate the social issue of gender-based violence and i leave you with this are you going to be that scarecrow layers i mean layers 3d story look at those eyes okay it's but, but you know what i mean and then you've got the zulu attire on the head that's made by rachel hungalula mukhendri well done girl thank you darling peace i'm signing out this was beautiful i am of course the flower of the garden i will see you again stay tuned peace Hi guys, my name is Jason Jack and I was part of a group that created this beautiful lady called Melady. Melady means the star, but for us it means the star of the nation. On her head 
is what we call a isitolo. The isitolo is a traditional headpiece and it symbolizes authority. On top of a head, we put on words of affirmation. That means exactly that. It gives her the authority that is due. On her face, we kept it faceless, <laughs> but it represents different people groups. And this pattern um, represents that from people from Upper Africa, South Africa. So we really try to incorporate everyone. On her body, it's called the refined gold process. I'll explain. So you can see here's a bit of gold spray, but then here it's yellow. Why I did that was, um, so when you refine gold, it heats up and it glows. And so that speaks of the refinedness in her, the resourcefulness. It's an unending value. She keeps on giving and giving. On the back, it's drawings of Bushmen and more African patterns. It symbolizes the ancient paths. So in front you have the value and resourcefulness, but at the back it had all the ancient past and stories that she has. Yes, we can give and we can give so much more, but we shouldn't forget where we come from. On her body is the traditional garment worn by Tosa women. And through this, we honor all the African women. We salute you. Hi everyone, um, my name is Angela Delfava and this is our Material Woman Eve. We had such fun as a team creating her. Um, she is made up of <laughs> lots of good stuff. Um, words of affirmation, um, material found that we actually found on the streets, um, as well as stuffing, um, as well as um, plants that have been cut off. So like we found this whole pile of like cut off um, plants and like um, trees and so we use that and we put all of that in her so um, all of that including the words of affirmation so um, there was poetry that was just um, us speaking life over her words of you know um, declaring that she's brave that she is beautiful that she knows who she is and so much more so um, she represents all women everywhere um, from indigenous women to current women um, and so that we, we tried to portray that through um, her headgear um, as well as her, her neck here. So that's representing the indigenous um, through two women who were in slavery um, and then from that um, freedom. And so <laughs> uh, that is seen through like, you know, her, her shoes, you know, her running shoes. She's, she's now free. She's, um, she's embracing all of who she is from the... Um, lighter skin to the darker skin um, that just represents all women um, all ethnicities everywhere um, we also tried to portray that um, with the different generations so she like I said she represents um, from indigenous to current but also um, the generations within the current so the the, um, the old women and so like you know the babies so <laughs> uh, we represented that here on her foundation um, and she is surrounded by um, different types of plants. So the two, um, this green one right here, this speck one and, and this orange one right here, um, these are indigenous plants. And then um, the, the, the purple and the yellow are um, uh, more Western plants. So it's just like a, a fusion of the two. So as you can see, a few of them are, are, are withering <laughs> because um, our weather lately has been um, very, very gloomy, very cloudy and, you know, rain and, and, and so forth. There hasn't been much sun. So this, this flower right here requires a lot of sun to, to, to bloom. And uh, that represents the, <laughs> the, 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 the youngsters of our generation that they feed off of the light that... Um, the, the the elder woman that they carry so that there's there's just that connection between the two um i am because you are type of thing um and then these two just represent beauty um and that um she is beautiful all the woman that she represents is beautiful and the message that she uh carries to the world is that um all of who you are um no matter where you come from, um, no matter your 
your your your flaws your your imperfections you are beautiful you belong um and that you are strong so her head is a polystyrene ball and we know you know the talk about getting rid of polystyrene cups and all of that because it's it's, it's not good for the environment you know it's not easily biodegradable so we saw it fit to be her her head because um we wanted to slot in words of affirmation in there so that those words of affirmation that's in her head in her mind um it will not be biodegradable will not be easily destroyed or um removed um and with that just being the outflow of the rest of her body and just of who she is and what she carries From the land I was made, into the land I will return. I am the land. I am Mama Zuka. It's the strength, strength in all that I am. Strength as a woman. It's the strength, strength in the many bloodlines that I carry within me. It's the strength. When I speak about these strengths, I speak of the original design, the original detail of the English, the explorers, pioneers, the vibrance and innovation of the Indians, the perseverance of the Afrikaners. Let's not forget the bravery of the warrior Ngunis, the guidance and wisdom led by the stewards of the land, the Khalids, the descendants of the indigenous people of this land. Open my pockets. I have a letter for you. I am filled with pillow stuffings, stuffed with untold stories, made up of tears, tears of joy, tears of hurt, tears from the past. Don't just look at a distance. I invite you to come closer, to see the beauty that you hold from within. Come closer, look, your story is my story. Now. 